Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and this is part two of looking at the theoretical reasons as to why a monopoly does not have a supply curve. This will be part of every playlist for Theory of the Firm to emphasize this point. Um, and I'll also put comments on a few of these videos where I've labeled some of my monopoly or duopoly or oligopoly or monopolistic competition models with having a marginal cost curve equal to supply. That is an error. This video is meant to correct that, that we can only label that curve as a marginal cost curve. So let's get into the reason why monopoly has no supply curve. So in the previous video, we looked at perfect competition, the industry, and we emphasized that supply curves tracks a positive or a direct relationship between price and the quantity supplied. So that if in the industry demand increased or decreased, let's say here in this scenario, demand increased from D1 to D2, we would see an increase in the market price from P1 to P2, and firms within that industry would respond by increasing their quantity supply from Q1 to Q2 along their supply curve from point A to point B. They would be able to do that because the higher price increases total revenue. As price rises, total revenue also increases. And we can also say that the producer surplus for the firms increases. It goes from area A to areas A plus B, this brown shaded area to uh, include A plus B, the yellow shaded area. So as the price rises, firms can cover their additional costs, their marginal costs of production, employing more land, labor, and capital resources, and capture more producer surplus and potentially more profit and so on. And vice versa, if price was to fall, they would unemploy or fire excess resources and cut back their production, reduce their quantity supply from Q2 to Q1, and maximize their producer surplus at that point. For the firm within perfect competition, they are a price taker. They will take the price set by the industry. So if they see the price rising from P1 to P2, individual firms will increase their quantity supply along their supply curve from point A to point B, employing more resources, marginal cost of production increasing, but they can also capture more producer surplus in a sense from area A to area A plus B. Total revenue also increases for the firm, and so they can cover their additional costs by the more the additional revenue and so on. In addition, we highlighted that uh, within perfect competition, we can see that price is equal to marginal costs and price is also equal to marginal revenue. Because it's perfectly elastic, price equals demand equals marginal benefit equals average revenue. And we can see that price is equal to marginal revenue. Price is also equal to marginal cost because the firm is maximizing profit and they're producing where MR equals MC. In contrast, when we look at monopoly, we can see that at their equilibrium where they're maximizing profit where MR equals MC, Price is no longer equal to marginal cost. Price is greater than marginal cost, and price is greater than marginal revenue. And this is going to begin to explain why monopoly does not have a supply curve uh, as we see in a more competitive market structure. It does not meet this condition of a direct relationship between price and quantity of supply. In that last video, if they were more competitive was, and more allocatively efficient, they would be producing where marginal cost equals marginal benefits, more allocatively efficient, we'd have a lower price and firms would increase their quantity supply to that price. But the monopolist is a price maker. And they're gonna produce less while charging a higher price. They're in a position to do so. They have a demand curve that's more inelastic. They are providing a unique good, a necessity, or a good that um, is needed by society, and they can abuse that power by charging a higher price. So let's understand here, how is it that a monopoly has no supply curve in the traditional sense? We're going to look at two scenarios. Here we have monopoly. This will be scenario number one. And in this scenario, we're going to see that quantity is constant for the monopolist, but price changes. 
And because of that, it's not following this condition for a supply curve. If price changes, there should be a change in the quantity of supply. But as we're going to see, that um, the monopolist doesn't necessarily have that. So how can we illustrate that in theory? We're going to change the elasticity of the demand curve. Perhaps this monopoly has 90% market share, but perhaps some new entrants start coming in or they get more investment and perhaps their market share falls from 90 to 80%. There's more options available. And so the demand curve can potentially become more elastic. So let's illustrate that. Okay, so I'm going to choose a point here. Maybe right here to draw my new more elastic demand curve. So we'll label this D2 equal to marginal benefit 2 equal to average revenue 2. We can see that there's a break between AR and MR. AR is now greater than MR for firms that are price makers. Fine. And now we're going to have our marginal revenue curve cross through the same profit maximization point. Okay, so here we have MR. MR2. It might be a little bit more diff difficult to see this, so I'll, I'll bold this a bit. So you can really see here this new demand curve. So here's this new demand curve and this new marginal revenue curve. Great. Well, what has happened to price for the firm? They will produce where MR equals MC, which is at that same point as before. So the firm is maximizing profit. Their equilibrium is where MR equals MC. They're producing at quantity profit max, but they're going to price according to demand. So here we have, let's say, point D. And price has now fallen to P2. All right, we have a decrease in price from P1 to P2. Price has fallen, but quantity being supplied is constant by the firm. According to the supply curve, the law of supply, if price falls, the quantity supply should decrease. But we can clearly see here that is not the case. So this is contributing to why a, a monopoly has no supply curve, why we can only label this as marginal cost and nothing else. Price has fallen, but uh, quantity is constant. All right, so here we're going to illustrate our marginal cost curve for scenario two, the monopolist. Here we have marginal cost. I'm not going to illustrate the average total cost curve in this case. Here we'll have our demand curve being relatively inelastic. And our marginal revenue curve crossing the x-axis. So we have demand equals to marginal benefit equals to average revenue. Here we have marginal revenue. And the firm will profit maximize where MR equals MC. MR equals MC at this point. So the firm will produce output there. So here we'll have a quantity supplied. We'll call this quantity profit max one. They'll price according to their demand curve. So here we have a price of P1. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to illustrate a change in quantity, but price being held constant. So perhaps we're going to have the elasticity of the demand curve change slightly. And I'm going to try to have this new demand curve perhaps intersect at this point. So here we're going to try to illustrate a new demand curve. So we're going to have our demand curve become a little bit more elastic. Demand D2 equal to MB2 equal to AR2. And here we have the marginal revenue curve of that graph. 
and it works out to about here, let's say. Here's M R2, fine. Let's uh, bold this a bit so we can clearly see. This is our new demand curve, and here is our new marginal revenue curve, fine. And we're gonna look for this new intersection of where MR equals MC, and that occurs at this point here. So the firm's gonna produce more output to maximize their profit. And we can see that quantity along the marginal cost curve has increased by the monopolist. So I'm gonna call this quantity at profit max two, and they're gonna price according to their demand curve. And we can see that the price is the same. Okay, we see that more or less price is constant. So in this scenario, in scenario two, we saw that the quantity change, but the price charged by the firm being held constant. Thus we can now determine that the monopolist does not meet this condition of a supply curve. In scenario two, change in quality, no change in price. In scenario number one, we have a change in price, but a, no change in the quantity. So thus it does not meet the condition of a unique supply curve, all right? The supply curve should have this positive relationship between price and quantity supplied, but we don't see that with the monopolist. Thus, in theory, this is just your marginal cost curve. It's not a supply curve. The, the monopolist is not responding to changes in price and altering quantity. As a price maker, they are determining quantity based on their profit maximization level of output. And as a result, you can get a change in quantity, no change, I'm sorry, uh, a change in price with no change in quantity or a change in quantity with no change in price. Okay, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.